off to many of my past or present teachers, but I'm a pretty huge procrastinator. <laughs> <laughs> Over the course of my high school career, I have completely mastered the art of leaving assignments to the last minute. This being said, I wrote the bulk of my travel talk during Saturday study hall. <laughs> completely stumped as for what I wanted to write about, a friend advised me to simply write what I believe in. For me, however, this is much easier said than done. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that there aren't a lot of things that I can honestly say that I believe in. The word belief is officially defined as the feeling of being certain that something exists or is true. It is human nature to respond to life's unanswerable questions and insurmountable challenges with a belief or faith. Throughout my life, I have watched with envy as my friends developed sources of peace that I was never able to fully identify with, such as organized religion, destiny, true love, or the law. But as I said on Second Mitchell, flipping through one of my favorite books, Earth and Beyond, for the millionth time, in a desperate attempt to avoid writing this talk, I realized that the only thing that I have consistently believed in for my whole life is outer space. Right now, as I speak, our galaxy, the Milky Way, is spinning at a rate of 225 kilometers a second. Meanwhile, it is traveling through space at 305 kilometers per second. The light that is streaming through the chapel windows right this second was made in the core of the sun 30,000 years ago. It spent a majority of this time fighting through the dense atoms that make up this great star and took eight minutes to make it to Earth once it left its solar home. There are 400 billion stars in our galaxy alone, and only one teaspoon of a star would weigh about one million tons. All of the comfort, guidance, and meaning that one could ever need can be found just by looking up. Spending an hour under the moon with your back to the ground can make even seemingly insurmountable conflicts suddenly become manageable and even beautiful. From our planet, the night sky is a peaceful backdrop of glittering dust, arranged in graceful patterns and scattered constellations. With a cup of warm tea in your hands and the familiar humming of cicadas in your ears, it's hard to recognize the whirling chaos of colors and, spound, and sounds spinning and dancing and crashing all around us. Although difficult to recognize from our perspective, the reality is that this is is that this building that we are sitting in is just one of many on this planet, which is one of just many in our solar system, within the galaxy, within the universe. What is larger than the universe? Well, the answer is that we don't really know. In 1929, an astronomer at Caltech University named Edwin Hubble suggested a now widely accepted theory stating that there are no barriers to the universe that it is ever expanding throughout time and space. There may be something surrounding us that the universe is expanding into, but because we are, by definition, limited to our own universe, we have no way of studying or even observing this possible realm. The only way that I have been able to understand this is to imagine that I am standing on the edge of the universe, and I take a step. The universe just expanded by one step. Reading about this in a book, it is easy to feel as if it is happening far away, but in, act but in actuality, it is something here and now, all around us and within us. So, if the universe is infinitely large, then does this mean that we are infinitely small and, in and inconsequential? This is a question that humans have wrestled with for centuries, but my answer is a definite no. The fact that everything is so infinitely large means also that everything must be infinitely small. Just as massive lumps of rock rotate around a gaseous orb of burning energy, every cloud in the sky, grain of sand on the beach, letter in a book, and stone that makes up this chapel fits together in a way greater than we could ever understand. The piece of this truth that is so comforting to me is that although humans often consider themselves separate from this perfect madness, we are all organic. We are each a cog in this machine. 
A man, or alien rather, who knows more about this than anyone is the doctor from the BBC show Doctor Who. <laughs> the doctor is the last one of an ancient race known as the Time Lords from the planet Gallifrey, who travels through time and space with trusty companions on his ship called the TARDIS. The doctor has mi lived many lives seen unbelievable pain and inspiring beauty. He has been exposed to all of space and time. He has witnessed the explosion of stars and the crumbling destruction of entire civilizations. However, he still cannot resist coming to the aid of a crying child and is convinced that everything and every person is immeasurably significant. In the episode A Christmas Carol, a human girl is described as no one important. To which the doctor responds, quote, you're nobody important? Blimey, that's amazing. Do you know, in 900 years of time and space, I've never met anyone who wasn't important before, end quote. The doctor understands something that we, as a race, seem to be forgetting more and more every day. Even though it sounds corny, each of us are important. We are all connected and we need each other in ways that we could never understand. I believe in space because it is crazy and it is terrifying and beautiful and confusing. It should all just crash and burn, but somehow it doesn't. And that alone is so perfect and magical that it makes it seem like maybe everything is exactly how it should be. So maybe God does exist, but so does a lot of other stuff. And maybe his glory is significant, but so is yours. And maybe there's a heaven and a hell but I have trouble seeing the point and thinking about it too much when there is so much overwhelming horror and beauty right here all around us and within us. I know that everyone here is super busy, but I urge you to look up at the sky on your way to class today and think about what lies beyond. Outer space reminds us that there's not a single thing in this universe that is not worth falling in love with, and that maybe, no matter how stubborn we are to accept it, everything is perfect. 